Hello, good evening, everybody, and welcome to the episode twenty-eight. I'm so I'm so glad because today I'm so honored to have Dr. Charles. You know, Dr. Charles is from Philippines, and please do help me to give him some love and light if you are watching us live right now. And Dr. Charles, shall we just you know share it out to our page or our profile first for this、uh, Facebook live? Uh, my, you mean I have to uh my Facebook page? Ah,、uh, yes, correct. Oh, all right. Um, well, you can find me on the、uh, Charles Edward Fernando Breathing Camp. Uh, you can look for it in the in Facebook. Yeah, Charles Edward Fernando Breathing Camp. Uh. Okay. Good. My, yes. Uh, that's my Facebook page, and、right. um. Wait, I need to open it first for you guys to see it, but um. Yeah. Okay. Uh, can, maybe we can share the link later. Yes. Yes. Okay. How do I share、yeah. it with you? By the way. Um. Did you see that the comments over there? You can just put up in the comments so the audience can see the link. All right. Yes.、Uh, audience. Stop sharing. Share comments. I don't see any comments here. Ah, here it is. Chat with the host. Yeah, at、oh. your right hand side. Yeah. All right, all right. I'll be okay. Here you go. This is my、uh, Facebook profile, so you guys can、okay. visit it. Yeah. I saw it. Yep. Great. And Dr. Charles, um, let me just first, you know, give a quick introduction about you first, right? Because、uh, I think my audience is just first time see you over here with me together. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Charles, right? I don't. Um, okay, I I'm not going to、uh, pronounce the the full name of Dr. Charles because it's quite long. So Dr. Charles is the <laughs> first and only Southeast Asian phys physician certified in Buteco method. Am I you know pronounce it correctly? Buteco. Well, I I think so. I think that will do. Um, it's actually a Russian <laughs> name, so I don't know how the Russians pronounce it. <laughs> well, you should say Buteco,、okay. Buteco. Yeah, it's, it's fine. Buteco.、Enough. Okay, great. And his pa patient in Maxon Show from an early age, and he grew up to become a renowned doctor for developing his own practice called Breathing Camp, where he has been successfully helping patients to lose. Even body fat, you know, and gain strength and confidence itself with his breathing methods. And today he's also here to talk to,、uh, to us to share with us about, you know,、uh, by using this method how to improve the、uh, the asthma itself. And nevertheless, he's also the author of the book How to Lose Weight Without Exercise. I think some of them are really、uh, excited over here. How to lose weight without exercise, right?、Mm -hmm. And using the breathing slim and lean integrative method, and learning how to breathe. Your life changing hack starts here. So these are the two books written by Dr. Charles, and his practice is mainly sustained by understanding his patients' breathing rhythms and implementing controlled breathing sessions to improve their overall health. And weight loss journey, and wow, this is amazing! He is the recipient of pioneering award from the Philippine Academy of Family Physicians, certified by Buteco Breathing Association from UK, and the chief of you know clinics in one of the oldest hospitals in Philippines, and Mary Charles General Hospital. And now is directing his effort as a writer and author to teach his method to a wider audience. You know we are such an、uh, we are so grateful to have you here today, Dr. Charles. And perhaps you can give give us a quick introduction about yourself. You know, should I have missed out any of them? <laughs> well, thank you, Grace, for this、uh, wonderful introduction. Well, I'm now up to my fourth book already, and I'm going to have my fourth book、wow. printed out. Uh, so right、uh, when I sent you this、uh, this message, this write up, it was at that time I had two books. I'm now up at four, and I've been focusing on、uh, treating asthma for the year 2021. So I do have a program for weight loss, but this year I've been focusing mostly on asthma, and it's it's been really good. You know, these asthma patients,、uh, you just treat. Uh, the the breathing exercises work very very well for a lot of problems.、Uh, but in asthma, asthma the the 
the the problem with asthma really disappears very fast with the, with this program. Okay. So fantastic. yes, I thought this. Uh, thank you, Grace. Yes, yes. And uh, Dr. Charles, would you mind to mm. share with us, right? What are the causes of asthma itself? Well, okay, uh, Grace. The problem here is first. Let me point out some of the issues that we have in medicine. Uh, in medicine, everything is theoretical. Everything is theoretical. It's like uh, we are doctors. All we did was just uh, observe what happened to people. We saw them, okay, this is what's happening. And then we have a hypothesis. We have an idea, oh, maybe this is the one that causes it, right? So yeah. in asthma, uh, in asthma, for instance, the common, uh, the common theory behind asthma is that it's genetic. People were born because uh, they had a genetic uh, predisposition to asthma, and when they are exposed to certain triggers, they can get uh, they can get asthma. No, however, right. this uh, this idea of it being genetic, um, not everybody is really so 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 good into this. I mean, not everyone is so sold into this idea. One of the doctors that was doing research on this, his name was Doctor Constantine Buteco. So again, you just it's just as a simple clue, you know, the Buteco <laughs> method and Doctor Constantine Buteco. Doctor right. Constantine Buteco started to notice that uh, Doctor Constantine Buteco actually had hypertension when he was a student. He had hypertension, and there was no medicine for his hypertension uh, for his type of hypertension back then. And then he discovered that. The dynamics of breathing, uh, of the different gases in your body, can do many things. No? And when he started to uh, manipulate the breathing, his blood pressure went down. And when he graduated, he was hired by the Russian Space Agency uh, to do studies on the cosmonauts. And you know, the Russian Space Agency, they were the first people to bring a man uh, to the outer space, not to the moon, just outer space, right? They beat right. the Americans there. And that was the time when Dr. Buteko was in the Russian Space Agency. And uh, he had a lot of equipment. They did a lot of studies regarding the breathing and all that. And when he finished, he said, you know, he didn't want his technique to just be used by the military to conquer the world, to you know, shoot people. And also he said, I want to bring it out to help people. So he went to a science research center in Siberia where he started to do research and they found that this stuff was amazing. This technique was amazing for many different things, but number one was asthma. And so what Dr. Buteko started to prove was that asthma is not necessarily a genetic problem. Yes, there is a genetic problem, but there is something beyond, beyond that. So you might have, uh, Grace, do you, have, do you know people with asthma? Can I ask you, do you know people with asthma? A, yes, I did know if I, I do. I, I mean, uh, I did come across some of the people, you know, uh, for us Chinese. Um, yes, yes. I'm not sure whether you heard about this uh, method or not. They, you know, they used to eat, uh, they used to take this crocodile meat to, yes. you know, to make soup and then in a way to cure the, you know, a very light asthma itself. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yes, I'm familiar with that. Here, uh, the <laughs> Here in the Philippines, we would use uh, the uh, the tail of the lizard, lizard oh. tails, and they would, yes. But not, not uh, these were also from the uh, from from those uh, ethnic uh, ethnic Chinese also who came over. They they would do, use this. Uh, yeah. So these are um, these are the remedies of asthma. Now, Grace, did right. you know that one out of every ten people in the world have asthma? One out of ten. So I know you know people wow. with asthma because one out of ten. So you just count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One of them has asthma. One out of ten. That's okay. a total of three hundred million people around the world. Actually, that's kind of wrong. Three hundred million, but it's one out of ten. But <laughs> it's probably a lot more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's a lot, right? But that's uh, a lot. I mean, as a profession, you as a medical doctor, what is the you know the usual medication or treatments? that doctor will use for asthma itself? Oh, but wait, uh, uh, we, we, let's answer the first question first, the first question. So, oh, so okay. Grace, what Dr. <laughs> Biteko was proposing was that the problem, the, the reason why asthma was prevalent on these people was because the breathing pattern is wrong. And it's true, when he started doing the research, he found that many of the people who have asthma, actually all of the asthmatics, they have a breathing pattern that's very uh, stressed and very deep, very deep. Yes. So our usual treatment uh, for asthma, you know, first is discuss what happens in asthma. The, the airways become smaller. 
so it becomes smaller and it's difficult to breathe. And number two, you produce a lot of mucus, a lot of mucus. And that the uh, the airways also, why does it become smaller? Because the muscles in the airways, they constrict. So they become smaller, uh, they, they constrict and makes your airway smaller. And the other one is that you will have inflammation, inflammation. So right. Grace, you're familiar with inflammation. If your hand is inflamed, your, your skin is inflamed, becomes red and it becomes yeah. thicker, right? Thicker. Correct. It's thicker, yeah. yes. So imagine if your airways become thicker, what will happen to the inside part? If it becomes thicker, then the inside part becomes smaller. Right. It becomes smaller, yeah. So it becomes very difficult. So these are the, the two mechanisms, plus the mucus production, that's three mechanisms that, that causes asthma, or that, that happens in asthma. So And there's, there's, uh, there's all the things that blocking the breathing system, right? Yeah, so what we need to do is first we give a muscle relaxant or something that will make the muscles relax and open. So these are your usual inhaler. Uh, uh, well, the inhalers, they usually have uh, steroids and the muscle relaxant. So this is what we call the beta agonists. The beta okay. agonists, yeah, what they do is um, they, they make the uh, the muscles relax. But if you get an overdose, no? you know, if you've heard of uh, people with high blood pressure, what do we give them with heart disease? We give them beta blockers beta blockers so beta blockers they stop the beta signal this, this is the signal called the beta signal well beta agonist makes it stronger so if you have asthma and you take uh, a tablet that is a beta agonist you might end up having palpitations your your heart becomes faster high blood pressure is a problem no and the, the same way is the opposite people have high blood pressure if they take medicines such as beta blockers you can worsen your asthma it can make the the, the uh, airway smaller. So that's the first one. We give right. medicine that will make your airways bigger. Number mm -hmm. two is that we will give you medicine that will remove the inflammation. So this is typically okay. steroids. So if, have you ever heard of steroids, Grace? Does it sound familiar to you? Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, uh, I heard about, you know, people who have this uh, eczema, they will always go for steroid, right? Yes, yes. So right now we just finished with the Olympics and it's always a hot topic. Are the, are the athletes using steroids? Because steroids, they do remove inflammation, but they can also use, uh, supposedly it helps uh, strengthen and make the, the, the muscles bigger, faster, mm -hmm. you know, stuff like that. So, uh, so these are the two main medications for asthma. And then some doctors would throw in the, the, the medicine for mucus, makes the mucus softer, uh, mm -hmm. makes, it, uh, makes it come out faster. Uh, but this 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 third medicine was um, it was controversial for a while. It was actually accepted, and then it became controversial, and now it's accepted again. So these are oh. some of the things with medicine they, they come and go. But what's really nice. exciting is that the the medical community has started accepting breathing exercises as one of those things that you can you can do to really uh, improve this. Yes. Okay, and that that was the answer for the question too, right? Yes, yes, the yes. Second question. Yeah. I think uh, you also partly answered the my my third question, okay? So my third question is that the Buteco method aims to normalize breathing to ensure the mm -hmm. correct balance of respiratory chemistry. So yes. is this an alternative therapy that can be used along with asthma medications? Yes. Uh, all right. Wow. This is definitely it can be used with my asthma medications. And uh, what I have noticed is uh, many times my patients are able to reduce the medicine use with this. So I, I recently had one particular patient and she was saying uh, she would have asthma attacks, asthma attacks. And then I told her, this is what you do when you have an asthma attack. Instead of taking your inhaler at once, try out the breathing exercises I taught first and just put the asthma inhalers as last place if it doesn't work. And mm. now she doesn't use the medicine anymore. She noticed that just wow. controlling the breathing stops the attack. Later on, uh, you know, the part of your brain, there's a part of your brain that controls the breathing. So once that part of the brain gets used to the breathing technique or the breathing mm. uh, part, you'll notice that the breathing becomes uh, more relaxed throughout the day and this person won't have asthma attacks anymore. Even if, right. they, if, she, if she experiences the same triggers, the same stress, same dust, same stuff that causes asthma, she can control the breathing and she doesn't get uh, asthma anymore. It's very, very, very nice now. So in the beginning, we use yeah. it as complementary. And then later on, uh, we, can, uh, we, we can start removing asthma medicine when the person gets Yeah, I uh, mean, uh, that's really fascinating, you know. I mean, without medication that, you know, we can cure our, our asthma just by, you know, naturally 
through our nature nature breathing system yes, right yes. yeah very much amazing yeah would you like to see how uh, a, a little bit of a small presentation to to show you how this works I'll oh sure first. please please go ahead dr charles all right i i have here my powerpoint presentation uh so here it is um this is a tree no? um the tree uh, the problem with the tree, you, know, you, you, you have a lot of diseases like diabetes, chronic fatigue. Well, asthma is not on this list. I should add it. So you have, you have all of these things. And uh, the problem we have with Western medicine today is that we keep, uh, we keep addressing the solution, these problems. But this is like a tree. These problems are on top and these are the roots. And the problem is our medicines keep just addressing the stuff on top. So for instance, if you have arthritis, you just take medicines for the pain of arthritis. So you don't solve the main problem, and so it comes back. It comes back, and you just take medicine again. These are the root causes of the ones on top, and one of the major ones is breathing. So I know, um, Grace, you have an upcoming book, and I do remember your upcoming book does, um, does cover, for instance, this poor self-esteem, uh, your sedentary lifestyle, right? The poor diet. These are all covered in your book. Uh, exactly, the, yeah. Yes, and one of the things that a lot of people tend to... Uh, 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 they, they, are, they forget to cover or they're not able to really cover as clearly is the breathing part. And breathing is very, very important. I'm just going to give you an example, Grace. If you stop eating, if you stop eating, you will, uh, you will still be alive for what? 40 days. You do know, uh, there, are, there's, there is a book, you know, they, they, they describe people 40 days and 40 nights, they, they were able to go fasting, right? In the desert, they go fasting. Yeah, fasting, I, I think right? I read about somewhere in one of the book, it, it mentioned about uh, up to like 30 to 40 days. 30 yeah, you, 40 can, days. you yeah. can do that. Right. Water, you know, you, you have people that who after uh, they get rescued from, uh, you know, building collapses and they get rescued two weeks after they're not drinking water, they're still alive, you know. But yeah. breathing, if you stop breathing, you can't, you can't even survive in five minutes. You know? <laughs> five minutes. So that is how important breathing is. And yet, a lot of uh, a lot of these uh, you you will see this picture in the internet if you type in tree of uh, uh, the tree of uh, medicine or something, and yet a lot of these don't have breathing within there. So I had to add this myself. You know? so breathing that is how important breathing is. So what does uh, what happens in breathing? The all right, I'm going to go here. This is how uh, breathing was taught to us in school. Now, in, in most of us, now I don't know about how you guys uh, had it in Malaysia. Uh, maybe it's different, um, but I, I've been giving this lecture and in many places, this is how, how it goes, right? So we were told by our teachers that we inhale oxygen and then we exhale carbon dioxide. Uh, right. This is it, this is it, right? And um, But the problem here is that it's not complete. Your oxygen has to go to all these different parts of the body. In fact, this isn't even complete. There's even more, right? Oxygen yeah. has to go there. It doesn't just stay in the lungs. So, Grace, how does oxygen go to all these parts from the lungs? Do you have any idea? Uh, carry by the blood bloodstream. Yes, very good. So I'm going to draw a hand here, which represents the different body parts. Uh, all right. So your oxygen will, when you inhale, the oxygen goes to your lungs, and you are absolutely correct. It will stick to the lung, uh, to the blood, in a part called the red blood cells. And then the mm -hmm. red blood cells will travel to your organ through the blood vessels where right. it will release the oxygen. Now, this is the secret. A lot of people think, hey, when you get there, I'm, it's just going to release the oxygen and your hand's going to get it. No, 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 it doesn't work that way. The red blood cell, the oxygen sticks to the red blood cell very well. In order for it to detach, it has to wait for carbon dioxide to stick to the red blood cell. And that's the only time that oxygen gets released. So you need to have an exchange of carbon dioxide before oxygen can be released. And then here goes the red blood cell goes back to your lungs using the veins and carbon dioxide gets released to the environment. So this is this is how it goes. Now, I'm going to ask you, Grace, uh, let's, let's, say, uh, let's just say you had, uh, uh, what is your uh, unit of, uh, what is your money there in, uh, in uh, what is your currency there in Malaysia? It's... Uh, um Malaysian uh, ringgit, Malaysia. Ringgit, yes, ringgit. All right. Ringgit. So you had one ringgit, and let's just say that uh, you had one ringgit. But uh, again, let's just say you had one ringgit. You went to a store, and you see in the store that each the candies there are sold at one ringgit each. You want to buy two candies, two pieces of candies, but you only had one ringgit. So if you give it, if you give your one ringgit to the store owner, how many candies will she give you? Two or just one? Uh. 
Okay, I will bargain with the storekeeper. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, but uh, the storekeeper says, no, this is my price. It's a fixed price. <laughs> he will only give you one candy, right? One candy, because you give yes. only one, one ringgit. Okay, yeah. so yeah. let's take a look at this, this concept. The red blood cells carrying two, uh, two molecules of oxygen, but there was only one carbon dioxide that was given. So there's only one molecule of oxygen that can be released one molecule of carbon dioxide can be released all right okay so yeah. the problem here is the hand needs more oxygen it needed two uh molecules of oxygen but it only received one uh molecule of oxygen so what happens to your cells if you don't have enough oxygen so again you the hand didn't receive the amount of oxygen it needed it, it lacks mm -hmm. it right so yeah. this is your cell and in your cell you have a part there called the mitochondria it looks like a sausage this part over here and the mitochondria is where uh, your oxygen will come in, your carbohydrates, your proteins, and your fats all come in. Oh, the and nutrients, will, yeah. Yeah, the nutrients, and uh, they will undergo what you call aerobic respiration in the mitochondria, and it will produce energy. Particularly, we call the unit of energy, if your currency is ringgit, in the, um, in the cell, the currency is ATP. ATP, mm. adenosine triphosphate, I think. So 36 units, that's a lot, that's a lot. Right. Now, your problem here, because a lot of the cells don't have enough oxygen, it cannot produce this aerobic respiration and it cannot produce energy. So mm -hmm. if you don't have enough energy, these cells will die. And what will your cells do in order for it not to die? So I'm going to give you an answer. It will use a different way to produce energy. It will get really creative. And this is what we call, we, we, we're coming anaerobic respiration. Anaerobic meaning right. no Anaerobic, oxygen. yeah. Anaerobic, yeah. So an anaerobic... Uh, it only uses carbohydrates and then it produces a small amount of energy four units of energy and this anaerobic also produces uh, uh, a somewhat um byproducts you know it's like if you if your car uh, you didn't have gasoline so you put in some other oil in your car it'll probably still burn the oil but uh, the smoke will be different yeah and so yes. this is the same thing so it produces lactic acid and interleukins and this interleukins uh, can set off a chain reaction that will produce histamines. Have you ever heard of histamines, Grace? Histamines. Uh, no, I'm. I'm. I'm uh, this term is quite new for me, but I'm more familiar in terms of lactic acid because you know, for runners, when we run yes. for en endurance, then you know, we we hate lactic acid. <laughs> yeah. So you are right here. A lot of the runners they are using a lot of the anaerobic respiration. That's why they produce a lot of lactic acid. Now, the right. histamines, this is what happens when people have a lot of allergies and their doctors will give them a medicine called antihistamine. Antihistamine, which also are given to asthmatics. And antihistamines will knock out this histamine. Okay, now, Grace, is histamine your main problem? And the answer is, no, it's not. Your main problem here is oxygen. The lack of oxygen, that's why you headed up with histamine. So you are right, you are able to put it together with the, the runners, yes. Yeah? So the runners produce a lot of lactic acid also because their cells are lacking in oxygen. And this is also where the, the problem here, the, the people who have anaerobic respiration a lot, they lack energy. So you feel them, Doc, I'm always tired, you know. I, I wake up, I'm already tired, you know, you're always tired because they lack energy. And mm -hmm. this is also why they I get they get hungry a lot and they, they crave for sweets and bread because they're producing they're only using up carbohydrates to produce energy. They're not using up their proteins and fats. And this this grace is where the weight loss comes in. If your cells are always in aerobic respiration, you would be burning your fats and protein. But if your cells are always on anaerobic respiration, then you will be only consuming carbohydrates. So if you have runners, they, they run a lot, run a lot, run a lot. They always have a lot of lactic acid. You know they are always on anaerobic respiration and mm -hmm. that they're not burning their fat so efficiently. If you want to burn your fat more efficiently, you have to get yourself into aerobic respiration. Now, how do you get yes. to aerobic respiration? This is the secret. I'm gonna, are you interested to know how to get yourself to aerobic respiration, Grace? Oh, definitely. I think this is the method that you mentioned that, you know, Olympic uh, um, gold medalists, they are using this secret, right? Yes, yes. All right. I'm going to show you. All right. <laughs> okay. This is where, the, where it comes in. If you only have one carbon dioxide uh, molecule coming in like this, you only get one oxygen molecule to exchange. If you have more than one carbon dioxide, let's say you have two molecules of carbon dioxide, then your cells will get 
your organ will get two molecules of oxygen. So in short, the more carbon dioxide you have, the more oxygen your red blood cell will release. And that will mean more oxygen available for your cells. Mm -hmm. So this is now the problem that we have, Grace. In, my, in many places I've been to, and in fact, many books, in many books and many internet, uh, in many internet um, uh, websites, they still say that carbon dioxide is bad for your body. It's, it's a toxin that your body has to come bring out, remove. It's only good for the plants. Have you heard of this, Grace? Have you heard of this? Have people told you this? Um, um, okay, what I understood is that, you know, carbon dioxide is like the waste from the body because it has to go out from the body itself, yeah. Yes, so it is a way, uh, your body does remove it, but a lot of people, a lot of internet websites, and even a lot of science teachers, they tell us that because it's being released from the body, therefore it's a waste, therefore your body doesn't need it, it's bad for the body, you should always remove it. That's what they tell us. Now, here's the thing, Grace, do you... Uh, do you uh, urinate? Do you urinate? Yes, right? You do urinate. Yeah. Do you mm -hmm. sweat? Do you sweat out? Like when you exercise, you sweat out, right? Yeah. And that's all water. That's all water. So just because your body is removing water, you know, you sweat out, you urinate, does this mean that water uh, is water? Rather, uh, let me change my question. Your body removes water from your body, like you're, you're sweating it out, you're urinating. But is, is water important for your body? Yeah, oh, is definitely. Yes, yes, definitely. Right. So even yeah. if this substance is something that you keep removing from your body, it is still something very important. And carbon dioxide is just exactly the same thing. Your body keeps removing it, but it's very, very important. And yet it's never been really stated in our books, in our internet website. They just tell us, oh, it's a waste, it's a waste product, you have to keep removing it. They don't tell mm -hmm. you that it's very important because it plays particular roles in your body. And this is exactly the role that it plays, one of the roles it plays, that it, it, it changes with carbon dioxide, with oxygen, so that you get more oxygen. If you don't have enough carbon dioxide, you will not get a lot of oxygen. All right, right. so um, carbon dioxide has five functions. All right, uh, first, it delivers oxygen to your body cells, which is what I explained. And the second one is that it opens up your blood vessels. So when your carbon dioxide level is lower, your, car your blood vessels become smaller, and this restricts your blood. It, it brings up your blood pressure, you'll have uh, your your uh, hands will become numb or your feet will become numb. So you may experience people who would wake up and their hand is numb or they wake up, their foot is numb like this. And that's because they are lacking in carbon dioxide while they were sleeping. Some people right. with hypertension, you know, I had a patient from Malaysia who came over here to the Philippines. Uh, he came over to the Philippines and he said, he showed me his laboratory results. They were very thick and he told me, doctor, uh, all the doctors, you know, they did all this lab. They couldn't figure out what's wrong, but the doctors just keep giving me three medicines for hypertension because I have high blood. My blood pressure is always 180 over right. 100 or something. And I, I gave my system, I told you, know, your, your, your problem is the breathing. So I taught him how to correct the breathing. And when he went back and he went to his clinic, uh, he, his, uh, he works here, by the way, <laughs> when he came over and he had this blood pressure check, it was 120. It went down to wow. normal. And uh, we were able to remove this. Yes, we were able to remove his medicines. No? So, it's because carbon dioxide makes your blood vessels bigger. If you right. don't have enough carbon dioxide, the blood vessels become smaller. All right. Number three is carbon dioxide is an acid. When it goes to your uh, blood, it becomes carbonic acid. So now if you don't have enough acid in your body or in your blood, your body will produce a different acid to replace it. So what is the most common acid that you know of? You already mentioned one a while ago, lactic acid. Lactic acid. Mm -hmm. The other one is hydrochloric acid hydrochloric, so people, yeah yeah so a lot of the people who lack carbon dioxide uh, or they need more they suffer from cramps frequent cramps especially after exercise they frequent cramps they're trying to get to sleep and that, that's when the cramps come doctor why is it that i get cramps when i'm lying down not when i'm exercising you know it's because that's the yeah, time yeah. that carbon dioxide goes down <laughs> then they have hyperacidity Doc, why do i keep getting hyperacidity i take medicine and the hyperacidity keeps coming back it's because it's nothing wrong with your stomach your acidity your stomach is just producing acid because you lack acidity in your blood because you lack carbon dioxide. So I have a lot of people uh, with this, the medicine, I, I'm able to have them stop their medicine for hyperacidity. Uh, bronchodilator, so this is where uh, asthma comes in. Carbon dioxide opens up the airways. Remember I told you earlier, asthma mm -hmm. is when your airways become smaller like this. Carbon dioxide is one of the chemicals that actually opens up the airways. So if your carbon dioxide levels become smaller like this, it'll become uh, it'll become smaller. I mean, you have uh, reduced carbon dioxide, it becomes smaller like this, and you'll have difficulty of breathing. 
So that's the bronchodilator effect. And lastly, right. carbon dioxide regulates breathing, regulate breathing. So well, what happens here is when you run out of carbon dioxide, you might suddenly stop breathing. So you might hear people, you might have, uh, I don't know, your husband or your dad, uh, you, you might hear him snoring. Uh, so it's like this, uh, when they're asleep, they're snoring. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes <laughs> yeah and then suddenly it stops <laughs> and then <laughs> they, they suddenly beat like this right so their right. breathing suddenly stops while they're asleep and that's because now in western medicine again i'm gonna get into uh, uh in western medicine my teachers in uh, my the sleep specialist they tell us oh they, they don't know what causes it we have the chart here just shows oxygen is very good and suddenly they stop breathing we don't know why the Dr. Biteko explains it and says, that's because your, your carbon dioxide level had already crashed to a level that doesn't, that you don't, your, your brain, uh, there's not enough carbon dioxide to drive the, the breathing mechanism. And, the, and if you look at the chart of those who have sleep apnea, the, the sleeping chart, it's, it's mm -hmm. true. He, they stop breathing at the point when carbon dioxide is very low. And carbon dioxide is the gas that actually re regulates breathing. So um, this, there's a lot of times that people have asthma they have all of these that we mentioned. Now, uh, a lot of people with asthma, they also snore. And another thing is for us, for our viewers, uh, what you may experience is while you're asleep, you suddenly kick and wake up. You're, you're asleep and you suddenly kick and wake up early morning, usually three in the morning, four in the morning. You say, I don't know why. And this sometimes this comes with a with a dream that you're falling. You feel like you're right. falling, you, you kick and you wake up. This is what's happening to you. You run out of carbon dioxide and your body decides to stop breathing. So oh. if you not if you want your carbon dioxide to uh, improve your levels to improve uh, if you want to improve all of these symptoms then you need to improve your carbon dioxide level how do you improve it Grace uh, well this is where it comes in so this is I had a uh, the patient a uh, student from Florida he had sleep apnea and even if he was putting on the CPAP machine he was always sleepy every morning every day when he learned the Piteco method he found himself very energetic the the sleepiness all disappeared all right so. <laughs> The carbon dioxide, Grace, it's like money. A while ago, I gave you a, a, a story about ringgit, having one ringgit and all that. So your money, Grace, is the amount of money that you earn or you produce minus the amount that you spend. That's it, right? That's it. That's it. Let's just simplify it. There are people say investment, how much your yeah. salary. Let's just simplify it. Amount that you right. earn minus the amount you spend. So Grace, if you want to have money, what do you need to do based on this, on this uh, formula? If you want to have more money. Same thing. Yes. How do you save? You spend less or you earn more. You right. earn more or you spend less or both, right? Okay, so right. It, uh, so that's how you earn money. And carbon dioxide is very similar. Carbon dioxide is the amount that you make, the amount that you make or the amount that you produce divided by the amount that you spend. Very much like money, except instead of minus, you use division. Okay, uh, you produce it when you exercise and you lose it, you spend it when you breathe. So some people would say, okay, doc, I want to do exercise. I'm, I'm, I'm really grim. Come down. I'm going to exercise. Okay, I'm going to run up the stairs, run up the stairs. All right. And then, Grace, have you encountered people when they do their exercise, they become dizzy or they get short of breath when they come up right. the stairs? Yeah. All right. So I'm going to do a little test, but I know you're energetic. Uh, can I turn this off? How do I turn off the uh, PowerPoint? Um, yeah. All right. So okay. I know you're a little bit, uh, you are a bit energetic, you, you are a very athletic. So this might not uh, apply to you. So let's just right. test it out. So Grace, I want you to try this out. I want you to take deep breaths like this. Continuously. Take deep breath. Okay. Continuously. 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 Go on. Go on. All right. Okay. Are you, uh, do you are you starting to feel tired by any chance? Oh yeah. You're tired. You're tired now. Yes, okay. and I do. I do feel a little bit busy. busy. You know. Busy. All right. Yes. Okay, great. Yes. Do you feel this way after you do like very intensive exercise? You feel that kind of tiredness. Um. Wow. Okay. Not yes, as bad yeah. as just not as bad as the testing just now because. Yeah. I listen to my body, so I move according to my body. Yes. Yes, yes. But yeah, you, but you do feel that sort of tiredness, right? And uh, yeah. so, okay, did I ask you to exercise? And the answer is no. 
I didn't ask yeah. you the exercise. All right. Yes. So uh, yeah. the reason why uh, you are starting to feel that tiredness is not because of the exercise, but it could be because of your breathing. When you exercise oh. and your deep breathing when you exercise, that is one of the things that will make you tired very fast. And this is why I'm talking right. about Olympic athletes. Olympic athletes who know the secret, they don't deep breathe when they're doing their, their exercises because it tires them very fast. And the dizziness that you feel, you have a lot of friends who, when they go up the stairs, they become dizzy. Doc, and I get up the stairs, I'm, I'm tired and I'm dizzy. And you tell them, oh, it's because you lack exercise. But I just demonstrated to you, Grace, that you will get dizzy just by breathing. And what, what happens here? This is the stairways. Let's say, just say, you pretend I have stairs in front of me. When I'm walking, when they go up the stairs, this is what your friends do. This is what your friends do. When they go up the stairs, they go, ah, ah, ah. That is how they breathe when they go up the stairs. So when they get up the stairs, they say, Doctor, I'm dizzy. Or, Doctor, I'm short of breath. Doctor, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm tired. Or sometimes they even get asthma. I get an asthma attack when I exercise. And it's not because of the exercise. It's because they are breathing heavily when they exercise, when they go up the stairs. Like this. And that's what I demonstrated to you today. When you deep breathe, you get the tiredness, you get the dizziness. And if you have asthma, you will feel that constriction. You will feel that asthma attack. Does it make and, sense? And also, and also, I noticed that just now when you asked me to do the demo itself, I'm yes. basically breathing using my, my mouth instead yes. of my nose, my right? Nose, yes. Yeah, I, yeah that, that is one of the differences that I noticed, yeah. Yeah, so it is a principle. Uh, later on, we'll, we'll talk about some of the principles. Uh, all okay. right, so uh, can we go back to my PowerPoint? My PowerPoint. Sure. So uh, here, you can see that this is what a lot of people do during exercise. So they're going to exercise and they're going to get their carbon dioxide level up. However, because their breathing is heavier during exercise, so let's just say this is money, Grace. Did you earn or you lost? <laughs> you end up uh, losing lost. money, right? So this Negative. person, instead of <laughs> earning more carbon dioxide, end up losing carbon dioxide. So this is why a lot of people, when they try out exercise, they become dizzy afterwards. They get a heart attack when they get exercise. They get asthma when they get exercise because they're, they're instead of earning more carbon dioxide, they lose. And this is also one reason why you can end up with a lot of cramps when you do carbon dioxide. Because again, when you don't have enough oxygen leading to your cells, you will produce the lactic acid. If your cells will go to anaerobic respiration and you will produce a lot of lactic acid. And it's all because of the reduction in carbon dioxide. In fact, you'd be surprised, Grace. Majority of the benefits that you earn, you get from exercise is actually from the increase of carbon dioxide. I already mentioned earlier, you get to burn the fats and mm -hmm. the, the protein. That's because of the increase of carbon dioxide when you exercise. I already mentioned right. earlier, you produce more energy. That's because of the increase of carbon dioxide. People, right. you know, their hyperacidity disappears. Uh, they, they, the, in all, they, they, oh, they, they get better blood circulation. And that, again, is because of the increase in carbon dioxide. So majority of the exercise uh, benefits is actually because of the increase in carbon dioxide. So if you have people who don't get the benefits from exercise, it could be because they're exercising this way. Whenever they exercise, they breathe like this. And what's worse is when they are uh, asleep. When people are asleep, they don't exercise, but the breathing becomes heavier. And this is where snoring comes in. When carbon dioxide becomes lower and lower, the airways become smaller and they start <laughs> breathing like this, you know, and they start to have that snoring and all. And that, this is why you will experience a lot of people. Their main complaint is when they wake up, their eyes are itchy. They wake up with a very dry mouth. The, that is why they wake up. A lot of people with hyperacidity, their hyperacidity is worse when they wake up. It's because the because this is what's happening in the morning. And you also encounter people, they suddenly wake up three in the morning, four in the morning, they don't know why. They have a hard time going back to sleep. It's because the carbon dioxide was falling, crashing when they go to sleep. And hey. if you want to correct this, Grace, you need to learn how to control your breathing, that it becomes less, less. So Unfortunately, a lot of people, when they talk about breathing, a lot of breathing programs, they tell you to take deep breaths. <gasps> deep breath, taking as much as you can, remove as many carbon dioxide. I'm sorry, but that is going to make things worse. That will make you, that will give you this particular type of breathing. And so Dr. Buteko had studied this a lot, had studied this a lot. So Grace, I'm going to show you, uh, can you turn off the, the PowerPoint, please? I'm going to show you a demonstration, another demonstration. Oh, sure. All right. I want you to try putting your uh, your hand here, and also for our viewers. Now you can put your hand here on your chest. Yeah. And then I want you to take a deep breath. Inhale and exhale. And take a look at your your chest. Take a deep breath. Inhale. Exhale. All right. Did you notice that your chest became bigger and smaller as soon as you inhale? It became bigger and smaller. Right. Yeah. Look at yep. your shoulders now. Look at your shoulders. Take a deep breath. Inhale. Exhale. 
did you notice your shoulders becoming like this, moving like that? Yes, you did, yeah. right? All right, wait, I'll just adjust my screen a little bit. Uh, okay, I can adjust it. All right, so it's moving like that. Now I want you to look at my chest, my chest. I'm gonna take a deep breath. Was it moving? Was it no. moving? And no. no. Okay, I want you to look no. at my shoulders. I'm gonna take a deep breath. Was it moving? No. No. Right. So the way we breathe is different, Grace. Breathing is something that we take for granted. It's something that we've been do doing since we were born, and everyone thinks they're an expert at this because it's something that we've all been doing all our lives anyway. Just like exercise, you know, sometimes when you tell people this is what you should do, and they will get out to you, hey, who are you, right? <laughs> no, but really. <laughs> Exercise, uh, they've been walking all their life and you tell them you have to walk this way. But breathing is the same thing. It's something that we've been doing all our lives and yet I'm demonstrating with you that our breathing is different. I don't use this for breathing. I don't use this for... What happens if you use this for breathing, Grace? What happens here is if you use this, this is a skeletal muscle. If you use this for breathing, it will get tired. So first, uh, some people encounter chest pain, chest pain and palpitations and they have their heart checked and everything's normal and they say i keep getting chest pain it's because their muscles here are very tired because they use it for breathing number mm. two if you use this for breathing your muscles get stronger and right. shorter and it will pull your back this way so you'll see people whose posture is somewhat like this it'll move forward and your neck your head will move forward all right i'm going to turn to the side and when it's at the side you notice that the head is forward the neck is is in this position right it'll get tired It'll get tired, and when it gets tired, you're going to get a head that comes from here, going here. And it's, it's like a, uh, we call it palpating, palpitate. Uh, no, um, uh, it's, it's like, a, uh, I don't know, the, I, have, I have the Filipino term for it, but not the English term. That, 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 that's uh, pain at the back of the neck, right? The back, yeah, and then it, it's, it's palpating. It's, it's like this. It's, uh, uh, yeah, it, it's, a, it's a palpating type of pain. It's like it's throbbing. No, throbbing. Throbbing is the right term. It's a okay. throbbing type of pain like this. So it comes from here going here. And a lot of people, when they're, as they get older, it becomes worse and worse. And they really have to sleep eventually just to make it disappear. And that's because of their posture. And the post, that posture is because of the breathing again. So can I show you my PowerPoint again? Show you my PowerPoint. Yeah. So here again, this is a person whose breathing is from the chest. No? And by the way, if you keep breathing and your shoulders keep moving, you will also wake up with back pain. So you may encounter people with, hey, doc, I wake up with back pain and all my lab tests are normal. They just tell me it's normal. It's because you're breathing all night. Your, 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 muscle, your, your shoulders kept going up and down all night because you were breathing using that. So when your body gets, uh, when it becomes shorter and stronger, your head will be pulled forward. So your body is going to tilt forward and you will fall. So in order right. for your body not to fall, your your uh, lower back is going to be sent forward like this. So you're going to have this S shape. You're going to have this S shape. And this, okay. you might have met, seen a lot of people with this S shape. And this uh, will cause lower back pain when you're seated for a long time. Or if you're, uh, you sit a long time or you do something for a long time, you're going to get lower back pain like this. Yeah, so, that, that is a bad a bad posture yeah yes and even if you use uh some people they'd go to a chiropractor and they'd have this aligned and it would come back after a while it would come back some people they use a brace and when you remove the brace it comes back and they why does it come back and it's because it's because of the breathing you didn't correct how you were using your muscles if you don't right. if you don't correct your muscles it's not going to get corrected so if you correct your breathing you have a very good chance of getting a very good posture and almost all of my students who learn the Biteco method their posture instantly improves with the breathing exercises because they stop using this one and their shoulders for breathing so it's it's really breathing really encompasses a lot of problems really a lot of problems and uh unfortunately we don't have a uh we, we don't most of our doctors we they're not we're not we don't train people how to look at the breathing patterns we look at they tell people oh you listen to the back and you listen to the to the sound you look at the laboratory results for the blood oxygenation and all this we don't look at the breath breathing part the one i just showed you the muscle the use of muscles when you breathe we uh, that's not something that is standard uh in medicine no in western medicine right. so this is me by the way and uh in seven years when i was seven years old i woke up inside one of these oxygen tent this is um, an icu of a hospital and i woke up at the icu i didn't know i was about to die the night before because of an asthma attack so that was how bad my asthma was and i grew up in asthma with hypersidity with back pain i would get tired when i when we exercise i would wake up with cramps you know everything i told you earlier i had all of them and wow, okay. uh, i took up 
this is Jack Virgin. He he would come to uh, the Southeast Asia actually, and he would go to Malaysia. He would go to uh, Hong Kong. He would go to the Philippines to teach Buteco method uh, around two or three times a year in the Philippines. I think Malaysia was once once a year. Uh, Indonesia, you know, and I learned the Piteco method from him. And uh, I eventually I graduated from medicine at the University of Santo Tomas. This is one of a very prestigious medical school out here. Uh, and then I volunteered to work in Africa where we were in a forest. We didn't have a lot of medicine. So the doctors here told me, Dr. Charles, why don't you try teaching Biteco method here? I said, all right, I'll try teaching it. And uh, I remember my first patient, he was, uh, he had, he was 50 years old. He developed asthma. Uh, as an adult and he started he couldn't go back to his farm because he was always coughing and coughing he just kept going in and out of the hospital he needed his inhalers always using the inhalers every five minutes every 10 minutes while i was talking to him he just kept inhaling and inhaling you know when i taught him biteco method on day two his asthma disappeared his wow. asthma he had no more attacks on the second day uh and that was it and because of this the hospital started assigning so many asthma patients to me i had to learn how to do how to teach it to children to uh to pregnant women to a lot of people and eventually i was discovered i got certified in europe by two groups the buteco clinics international and the buteco breathing association in uh, that's uk and the buteco clinics in ireland and uh buteco clinic international is now the largest uh, Buteco uh, authority in the world. They're the biggest authority in the world now. And they asked me to become their, their I was their first medical advisor. They asked me to, <laughs> to become their medical advisor there. And I also, well, of course, this is my website, breathingexpert.com, and I'm chief of clinical marriage chance. And I also put up my, the association in Cameroon, in Africa, to help foresee the group. So I've been teaching the Buteco method in uh, different countries. And uh, uh, and now because it's online, I am not able to teach it uh, online to other countries. So, Grace, would you like to learn just a little bit more about how we, how we're going to work, uh, how we can help you improve your breathing? Even if, let's just say, I know that most of the people listening here in Facebook might not be able to attend my lecture. Uh, I would be very happy to share with you a few things, a few notes that could help you out. Um, Dr. Charles, uh, yeah. I would like to. I would love to, but uh, I'm afraid that we only have 10 minutes left. <laughs> All right. So, okay. Yes. So in this case, we might as well invite you to my workshop then. Uh, my workshop yeah. is on uh, February, 4th, uh, August 14th. Now I have, I run workshops twice, uh, twice a month. And uh, the one that's upcoming on this Saturday is August 14th, uh, 20, 2021. I do it via Facebook Live. Uh, right. This is 30 p.m. Manila time. I think, what is the difference between Malaysia and Manila time? I think we're like one hour away or almost the same, I think. So, no, it's exactly uh, no, it's the, the same. It's, it's, the same. it's exactly Manila, the same. It's yes. Yes, it's the same. Exactly so, the same. This is 8.30 p.m. on August 14. I will be doing this via Zoom and via, via Facebook Live. So I'll be very, I'll be telling you more about how this works. And this is, I also give my, my uh, schedule for the workshop for those of the people listening who may want to attend the workshops. Yeah. Yes. Dr. Um, Ch uh, Dr. Charles, would you mind to put up the link over here? Uh, because I, did, I didn't see the link. Yeah, the link of my workshop. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, the all right, link I'm of your give you, uh, all right. The, the link for the workshop, yes, wait, uh, I let me go back to StreamYard. It's like I lost the stream. Okay, the workshop, uh, the workshop schedule, workshop links, you will find it on my website, www.breathingexpert.com slash upcoming, this one. So breathingexpert.com slash upcoming. You just visit this and you'll see that the, upcoming Zoom link and the upcoming Facebook Live uh, group. So there will be a Facebook group that they join and I'm going to I'm gonna uh, do the Facebook Live on that group. Now, I prefer that you join the Facebook Live uh, group because I get to count how many people are coming and I'm able to remind you right before the event. Oh, you're going to have sure. and the link. The other one, the Zoom link works for people who don't have Facebook. Of course, everybody who's watching us now has Facebook because they're on Facebook Live. <laughs> exactly. Right. Okay, uh, let me just repeat about the workshop. It is a free workshop, right, Dr. Charles? Uh, no, no, um, let me get, get this right. The, the, the one on Saturday is a free uh, talk, rather. It's a free okay. talk about how, uh, how I, I can help you with your asthma. Uh, but if you don't have asthma, it actually works for sleep apnea. It works for people of chronic fatigue. 
uh, as I mentioned, hypertension, the people with lots of allergies. But I am focusing on my discussion on asthma. Asthma. Right. So uh, you know, if you know anyone with asthma, you have friends with asthma, you have relatives with asthma, your boss has asthma, please uh, ask them to visit this link uh, and attend the lecture that can save their life. You know, if you get, if uh, right now it's the monsoon period, so there's a lot of rain. Uh, if ever there's now ECQ, so you don't want to go to the hospital because of an asthma attack, do you? You want to, it's it's now, you know, hospitals are overloaded. Just go yeah, in there and get exposed. I mean, the hospitals here in Malaysia is totally occupied. Over here too, occupied. here yeah. too. So you don't want to get an asthma attack now and go to the hospital, right? So learning how to control your asthma without medicines, without having to run to the hospital, can save somebody's life. So if you know anyone right. with asthma, your family, friends, please refer them to this talk. This is the schedule for the talk. And uh, I mean, this is the link to the schedule of the talk. It's a talk that could potentially save their life. Or if you have asthma, your life. Please attend this one. I'm inviting you all. And thank you, Grace, for this opportunity for me to invite people, by the way. Thank you so much, Dr. Charles. You know, it was like such a great pleasure to have you here today. Yeah. Thank you, Grace. Same here. It's been a been wonderful discussion. Yes. Right. So with that, um, thank you so much, Dr. Charles. Then I'll see you around. Bye for now. Bye. Thank you, Grace.